Welcome back. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, a TV and film podcast. We talk about all kinds of movies and big popular shows like Stranger Things and House of the Dragon. Would you like to know more? Would you like to know more? <laughs> but today, burying the lead there. Um, that's not what that means. Uh, today, <laughs> we're talking about a patron mandated movie. Uh, we do that from time to time. And this week, it's Starship Troopers. Well, not this week, this time. It's Starship it's t- Troopers. Today? Today? It's Starship Troopers uh, suggested to us by Adam Busby. Adam, what an excellent choice, my friend. I feel like this movie is getting a much needed resurgence. Yes. Uh, it came out in 1997. Uh, I adored this. I would have been nine, 10 years old when this came out. This was the type of movie that I would have rented over and over and over, uh, you know, in my early years for multiple reasons. I was a big action fan. Uh, I loved like military stuff, gun stuff, alien stuff, big sci-fi fan, Uh, boobs, huge fan. Oh my God, boobs. Bibs and babes. Bibs and babes and butts. Uh, big Denise Richards. I had a huge crush on Denise Richards. Uh, I, I wore out the Wild Things VHS. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my part. <laughs> uh, but Steve, I know you're a big fan of this movie as well. So this is kind of been on the calendar for months and we're like oh i can't fucking wait this is one of those movies where for the longest time we we're like man how are we gonna get starship troopers on the pole for oh yeah we've been trying we've to been find trying a way to talk to, about this yeah because both of us love starship troopers i i love this movie so much uh so thank you to adam for finally you know putting our feet to the fire and yeah he knew that it. and just took one for the team was yeah like, here you go yeah this do you want to hear why adam specifically nominated would, starship troopers oh, love to Adam writes in, hey, Steve, my relationship with this movie is a short one, a very short one. I did end up finally watching it for the first time on the 5th of March this year. Oh, literally just did this for us. Just a couple days ago. And he said it didn't disappoint. (laughs) Thank God. Can you imagine? We talked this movie up. He made it their uh, uh, chosen film and then he hated it. That would have been awful. Uh, they can, uh, Adam continues. It was one of those films for me. I'd always heard good things about knew I'd enjoy, but for whatever reason, never watched it. It's a fun movie, quite fast paced and chaotic, had my attention all the way through, uh, some places more than others was not expecting the co-ed shower scene at, at all. Bonk. <laughs> Bonk. The reason I chose this movie was because you guys had mentioned it so many times. And so I knew it would at least go down better than the other sister. <laughs> I'm reading this for the first time. Everyone shits on the other sister. Oh, those poor Screamo sisters. Mm. Uh, And I, and also encouraged me to finally watch it for myself. So thanks guys. I hope you did enjoy it as much as you remember. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts. So Mm. thank you, Adam, for suggesting Starship Troopers. Indeed. Funny thing about that shower scene. I'm sure you've heard this story, Steve, but uh, the actors were a little, I don't want to say peeved or annoyed, but they were, I think playfully like, we're all got to stand naked in this, right? A little uncomfortable. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. So they told Verhoeven, who's European, uh, hey, if we're going to have to be naked, you're going to have to be naked as well. And you too. Anybody in this room has to be naked. And then Verhoeven was like, okay, because he's right. European. So he. And then isn't the cinematographer grew up in a nudist colony? So the cinematographer is like, cool. Yeah. The, it's like uh, going back home. I think it was Vacano had, uh, Joss Vacano had uh, grown up in a nudist colony. So they literally couldn't care less. <laughs> so the guy holding the camera, the director, and all of the actors were all naked in that room when they shot that scene. It's a stuff of legend at this point. Um, yeah, because they've evolved past that in this society and in, in the in the story that we're telling, right? The co-ed yeah. shower is no big deal. Yeah, so this movie, Starship Troopers, for people who don't know, you know, it was actually Dina Meyer. I'm sorry, who played Diz, who suggested that she was the one that was like, because he had a reputation at that point for provocative sex scenes in his movie. Yeah, and he had um, been trying to do a co-ed shower scene in as far back as like RoboCop. He was trying to figure out how to do that in a movie, but it like didn't work for RoboCop and. Th- this movie, like, I guess, made the most story sense to to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you don't know, Starship Troopers, at its base level, it seems like just your classic sci-fi romp of humanity is attacked by a alien race of arachnid bugs, uh, and humanity has to go and start a war and, you know, protect Earth from the invading alien force. 
But when you like dig deeper, it's actually a pretty uh, clever and biting satire against fascism. The humans in this case are living under a fascistic regime. Um, and this movie kind of poses that at this point in, in the this regime that gender doesn't quite matter. Like people have evolved beyond that. Like who you, what your bits are don't matter because all that matters is the, the betterment of the regime and the society and like, uh, your career basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and when the movie and the movie's actually based off a novel written by, um, Robert A. Heinlein. Yeah. Heinlein, a uh, big, big sci-fi legendary direct, uh, author. Yeah. And apparently, uh, also like, uh, there are some people who will dispute you on this, but like, it's, it's common. I don't know. The mainstream belief is that Heinlein was actually very much like pro military and pro the military taking over a country and the whole speech that the, um, that uh, uh, Michael Ironside's character gives in school where it's like violence is the best way to solve a problem. Like that's something that Highland apparently was like, like, yeah, you know, look at it. When you have yeah. a war, you solve problems. Heinlein's original novel is very pro fascism. Yeah. And Verhoeven's a Dutch man's take on that. Not at all. was the intention. Yeah. Because uh, Verhoeven grew up in Nazi occupied. Uh, where's that? Uh, I'm going to get the country wrong. Holland? Except Holland. Was Maybe. It, is it Holland? Mm. Well, anyway, he grew up with, with, like with, like he's very Over familiar. there. Over there. In the, in the world. The Western Front. <laughs> 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 I could look this up quickly, but I can't find nah. it. But, he, but, he, but, but yeah, he grew up with that. And I think uh, Michael Ironside even asked him on set one time, like, hey, why are you doing this like right wing fascist movie? And he's like, basically like, because they would hate that I'm doing it. Like <laughs> that type of thing. And he's, he's making fun of fascism the whole time. Like, even though there's all these pretty pretty pe uh, people like I'm all about the military and rah, rah, rah. It like really kind of pulls the mask down. Like this is actually kind of an awful society. If you really step back and think about it of what's happening, it's a really awful society to be a part of. And, but when you watch it, it can seem fun. Like, Oh, this is fun. They're going to have fun. But then he, sh he pulls back the horrors of war. Like this is actually what war is. It's yeah. not this propaganda shit that you see all the time. Absolutely. Um, that's why he cast, Casper Van Dien, uh, cause he's got that Aryan square jawed look, you know, the kind of person that would appear in like a Riefenstahl Nazi propaganda film. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really interesting that not only the audience at the time in 1997, but even the critics really thought he was making a pro fascism movie or didn't think about it at all. Mm -hmm. When he has a history of biting satire, that's all he's ever done. Robocop, Robocop is, yeah. is a satire that kind of goes over people's heads a lot of the time too. Cause it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it it flopped miserably at the box office and was panned uh, as either brainless or actually fascistic, which is fascinating because if you watch it now, it is so obviously yeah. a satire that it's kind of crazy to put yourself in that headspace. But it trust and believe it was very much a thing. I was 10 years old, so I forgive myself. Oh, for sure. I had no idea that this film was a satire. I did not care. I thought it was cool. And I actually think it's um, really indicative of how effective alt-right pipelines can be that I was so sold on this. I was like, absolutely, I'm doing my part. I want to go fight the bugs. <laughs> I'm doing my part. Is Denise Richards going to be there? Yeah. Because uh, I'll sign up right now. Where's the, the co-ed showers? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like both. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> um, no matter where I look, I'm having a great time. So I, <laughs> uh, and he liked the nudity in this movie because he always, he said, quote, it is strange, but of course, Americans get more upset about nudity than ultra violence. I'm constantly amazed about that. I mean, I haven't seen any sex scenes in an American film that are anything other than completely boring. A bare breast is more difficult to get through the censors than a body riddled with bullets. Mm-hmm. And he finds that disturbing. And that's why he wanted the shower scene to be in this super violent movie. Cause he's like, this will be the thing that upsets them out of all this other crazy shit. Yeah. And this is a super violent movie. Like it's very gory. Uh, it, it, it definitely hits you with the, the violence, but yeah, then, but people really would be like, Oh my God, they're showering together. Oh my God. Boobs and butts. Yeah. And uh, he hated the book, the Heinlein's book. He didn't even finish it. Uh, and he said, the idea I wanted to express with that shower scene was that these so-called advanced people are without libido. Uh, here they are talking about war and their careers and not looking at each other at all. It's sublimated because they are fascists. Uh, like basically like they get no ass because they're right wing. <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted to 
I wanted to cast Andrew Tate in every role. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I love this movie. Uh, I, I've loved it even when I didn't get it. And now mm -hmm. that there's this deeper layer to it, uh, I adore this movie. Apparently, I don't know. I'm quoting, I'm paraphrasing a story that I heard recently. It was actually Dave Chen on his show, but they were talking about this movie recently. Uh, and there's a quote that uh, Verhoeven always wanted to make a, a Nazi movie. Um, similar to zone of interest in a way, you know, that it was just really difficult to get made on paper when you say it, it's like, Ugh, I don't, I don't want to show like from the point of view of Nazis. I, I don't think so. I don't think that's a good idea, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously not pro, but he wanted to do it from their point of view Yeah, and he could never get it off the ground. And so when the script for starship troopers based on Heinlein's fascist ass novel came across, <laughs> some, they brought it to Verhoeven, like, here's your chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he very much, oh, this is a Nazi movie. It's a mm -hmm. anti-fascism movie. Well, I mean, when, um, when, uh, uh, oh, shoot, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, when he shows up at the end, he's wearing like that uniform. That's very much an SS uniform yeah. to the point where and, like uh, the little Eagle emblem thing, even. Yeah. Like to the point where they were calling him, uh, uh, Doogie or, um, they were calling him Doogie Himmler like on set because <laughs> yeah. he played Doogie Howser. He obviously yeah. looks like Heinrich Himmler when he's in that outfit. Uh, like he's definitely making fun of the like fascism and Nazis and stuff. Yeah. So this is society. This is stuff I never thought about as a kid. You have to serve in the military in order to be a citizen. Yeah. Right. And so to, to vote, you have to serve in the military or it's a much easier path to being able, allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. Uh, they limit how many children people can have. Like in order to have a baby, you have to get a license, which is easier to get if you serve in the military, right? Yeah. The teacher at the beginning is basically, is or not basically, is explicitly saying violence solves everything. It's mm -hmm. the most uh, effective form of negotiation ever. What about Hiroshima, you know? Um, yeah, because I think Diz says like, my mom says violence never solved anyone. It's like, I think the people in Hiroshima would have a different opinion of that. Touch you with my nub. Yeah. <laughs> and literally like all the teachers have like their limbs blown off. Like they're all these mangled people who who served and uh, in, in theory ha have their citizenship, but like they're, they've just been like chewed up by the system and spat out mm -hmm. and they're recruiting. Mobile infantry made me the man I am today. <laughs> and he has no legs or arms. <laughs> and, and like uh, they're using the high school as like a whole recruiting ground to get yeah. more people to sign up, which, you know, you know, that, that happens in American high schools too. Does. Um, but, it, it, and, oh, I didn't pick up on this until much later in life, but, uh, where are they from, Chris? Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires, which is in Argentina. Where did a lot of Nazis flee? Uh, oh. World War II. <laughs> Argentina. Did they really? <laughs> yeah. Like Argentina is where a lot of Nazis went after the end of World War II to escape. Um, is that what Evita is about? I think so. Don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> I really don't know. I'm dumb as shit. I don't know either. <laughs> but I knew that like Argentina was I knew like, it was like colonial because they're all white and they're yeah, from Buenos Aires. And, yeah, they're from yeah. Buenos Aires. Everyone in that high school is like the most Aryan of people, you yeah. know? And, and it's just one more little layer to this being like, no, we're, these are Nazis. <laughs> yeah, this is very obvious. And also the entire movie, something I didn't pick up as a kid, is is basically structured as a propaganda film. Yeah. So you could argue we don't actually know if any of this stuff really happened the way that it does because it, periodically it opens this way and periodically it'll dip back into the whole like would you like to know more is is online somebody's clicking through pop propaganda videos and that's yeah. the the storytelling device of this movie. And I think it's interesting as an adult to look at are the bugs even any threat to them at all? Does, is all well, of yeah, that fabricated? Was it uh was it the reporter or somebody says in the beginning, like a lot some people are saying that the bugs are just trying to live their life and we're the ones that caused the war and they're just trying to defend that's when Rico themselves. Rico leans in after, you know. The only good bug is a dead or he's, he's, that's not that line, but he says like I say kill them all. Yeah. 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 So and that is like a common that's probably what happened is the bugs are just doing Buenos Aires was an inside job. <laughs> It was an inside job that, yeah. Cause there's that That's whole why thing. I text you that, that night. They have the, the planetary defenses and they let that asteroid get through. Yeah. That's, that's a common belief is they let the asteroid get through and blow up Buenos Aires so they can declare war on the bug. Yeah. Um, but also why wouldn't they just like nuke the entire planet of Clendathur? Like why were there mobile troops there at all ever? Cause frankly, I find the idea of a smart bug offensive. <laughs> offensive. Offensive. I think about and, that a lot. And the, you bring up the propaganda little vignettes that pop up and they're so well done. Like they're, they're funny cause they're so over the top and like the little kid, I'm doing my part or the kids like 
fighting over the gun and like the bullets when and they're all like out laughing. bullets to the kids and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But, but it, but it does kind of give you a nice little window into how this world works where there's a, there's one bit where like a murderer was caught today and is try and will be tried or is convicted guilty. His execution is at six. Yeah. So this guy's literally Broadcast caught on all channels. He's caught, tried, convicted and executed in the same day. Yeah. Like that's not how like a justice system works. And then, um, also, if you notice what they censor in those newscasts. It's the cow, but not the dead human bodies. Yeah, there's mutilated corpses that they're not censoring. But when the cow gets a little, I forget what they do to the cow, but they like put a big old, they even do it to the brain bug. They put up yeah. a giant sensor because it's just kind of like, you know, uh, in a way they want to show the dead bodies to get people like, oh, man. Yeah, exactly. To, to anger people. But also they don't want to anger PETA. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> With so, the cow. And tell them what they're doing to that brain bug. Yeah. Uh, yeah, brilliant movie that a lot of goes uh, over my head a lot as a kid, uh, but I adore. And I got to try out my new, I got a steel book too. I still, I've left unopened, but I got a new 4K, the 25th anniversary version. Oh, hell yeah. Which I assume came out a few years ago. Uh, I got to bust that out. That was fun. Did you watch, so you watched it on the Blu-ray? I, I did. Nice. Is How it, it streaming look? anywhere? Oh, it's uh, gorgeous. I streamed it on uh, the MGM uh, app. They have a streaming service? Yeah, they do. Um, huh. I got a seven day free trial, watched Starship Troopers and then got out. <laughs> got in, got out, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what what were your, what was the first time you saw this movie? Do you like remember watching this movie for the first time or like how you ingested it for the first time? I know it was in 1997 or eight on VHS it was the first time that I watched it. Um, I went to the video store multiple times a week. It's my only hobby and specifically looked for rated R action movies. So that was kind of my thing. So Starship Troopers, bang, bang, boom, perfect. Uh, and again, the would you like to know more? I just thought it was quirky. And I didn't think anything of it, I don't think. I literally just thought it's about these people that go to war against bugs. That's it. I love Denise Richards. I don't know who that is, but I'm, I'm all about that. I love her. <laughs> and it's funny because I don't even like her character at all now. And she's a dud. She sucks. Yeah. Um, she's yeah. a dud. Carmen's a dud. Mm-hmm. The, the first time I saw this movie, so in 1997, I was probably like 10 years old. And I remember wanting to see this movie so bad because you watch the trailers like and they've got like the blur song. Woo like in the trailer, like Did there's they explosions. Really? Yeah, it's so not what this movie is. It's just him making fun of Americans. Probably, probably. Like, you'd like this shit <laughs> um, action movie. But I want to see it so bad because it's sci fi. The ships look cool. The bug designs are honestly neat. The, the effects hold up like oh, the ship look great. Yeah, the effects really hold up in this movie. It's kind of astonishing that they did this in 1997. Um, but it's rated R. And in 1997, Carol wasn't about that. Carol wasn't about that. And to be honest, I I was a little coward. Like, oh, I can't watch that. That's rated R. Yeah. I'm not I'm not of age. I'm not 17. <laughs> I got a ways to go. Yeah. But I really wanted to watch it. I remember specifically my sister, she had her own house at the time and I would go spend the night at her house fairly often. And she had like Dish Satellite or something. Ooh. And do you remember Dish Satellite? You could, you know, basically rent movies. Uh, but what they would do is they would play like the first five minutes of the movie. And then once it like gets to the point, you'd be like, all right, if you want to watch the rest of it, you got to, you know, you got to pay for it. You yeah. got to spend 20 bucks. You got to call this number and, <laughs> and tell someone your credit card number. Uh, so I watched the first five. I remember I watched the first five minutes of this movie and the first five minutes of this movie, a guy gets ripped in half. Someone gets ripped apart. Yeah. And I remember being a little kid, like 10 or 11 years old, like watching this as being aghast. Cause at this point in my life- You've never I, seen a radar movie. I think, yeah, at this point in my life, this was the most violent thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I was just, <gasps> just did not know what to think. And I remember turning it off and just kind of like <laughs> rocking in my place. Like, oh my God, those people are dead. <laughs> and I, I don't think I watched the movie until I was like, 17 years old. I don't think I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I actually watched it until I was 17. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but ever since I watched it, I always have loved this movie. And, and when I was 17, I was old enough to get, Oh, I think I, I think this is a anti-fascism thing. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. Cause I also, at that point, the internet was around and you could like read other people's opinions on it. So like, I wasn't, you know, I, 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 like, I didn't have the same situation as you where I was young enough. Like, oh, I don't understand this. I, but I was old enough to be like, oh, I think this is a thing. Let me check it on the internet. It is cool. Yeah. People to this day, adults are like, nah, 
trying to make everything woke. And it's like, like you said, it's so obvious once yeah. you're looking at it, like they're the, the, the uniforms, the way the society is structured, the propaganda videos, storytelling structure. Um, but then you start digging into it like, dang, I wonder if that asteroid even hit Buenos Aires or if they just did, if they didn't just bomb it and say it was an asteroid. Yeah. Um, and what do they really want from Clendathu? You know, is there like resources there? Is there oil That would there? explain why they wouldn't <laughs> nuke it. Yeah. Something, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the whole psychic twist on it is interesting too, that I never, I just accepted as sure, whatever, yeah. as a kid, but watching it last night, I was like, it's fucking weird that they made Doogie Howser a psychic. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's, so that's not in the book. The psychic thing is really, isn't like a book thing. Yeah. It's awesome. The book is actually pretty. Like, Cyrano. Go bug mom. Oh, wait. Ah, Cyrano. Get off my leg. Um, I actually read the book when I was like. 11 or so really because i really wanted to watch the movie but i knew i wasn't allowed to so i got the book but the book is pretty like uh it's kind of boring where there's not a lot of like fighting bugs it's mostly like him in his classroom at school and they're waxing poetically about how great the military complex is you know mm. uh, so i remember not finishing it as a child because like this is kind of boring and where's the shooty bugs <laughs> um yeah there you, you go you could read a rated r book is it Young Steve was like, I got to work around. Yeah, because when I when I read uh, bad stuff in books, I just put that giant sensor label in my mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't actually see it. Yeah, it's true. And if you don't have any context to to like visualize it anyway, what could it do to you? Right. No harm, no foul. You had a much healthier childhood than me. <laughs> I'd, I'd be watching this shit like <laughs> ah, Carmen, and my dad would walk by. <laughs> Guy gets split in half yet? It's gonna be dope. <laughs> you know, I, I remember this sounds terrible. This is going to make my dad sound like a terrible person, but he like, he was kind of on paper. Like he was a great guy, but he also was raised in a very misogynistic, you know, toxic environment. He was on his own by 15 years old, tried to join the military, went, ended up going to military prison for punching a sergeant, you know, in 1969, you know, so he spent nice. two years in prison at the height of a not a great time to go to prison. Never a good time, but an especially bad time to go, you yeah. know, uh, in the late 60s. So had a rough life, but from that had give gave me bad lessons frequently. <laughs> uh, but he, I remember him watching this movie with me, maybe for the first time that I ever saw it and saying that uh, Carmen's character was a terrible person, you know, because he was. She, and she is, but all, he's like extra misogynist anyway. So the fact that she wanted a career. No, and like the early or, scenes where she's talking to Xander, like just that was uh, just like absolute no, no. All that hussy. I would have never spoken to her again talking to another man. She knows what she's doing. It kind of, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Kind of. Well, that kind of speaks to, I was reading a bunch of stuff how in the original edit, um, they make. Carmen and Xander's relationship more explicit. Like after Johnny dies, they start a romantic relationship. It's assumed that they do in this cut. Yeah. Yeah. It's assumed, but it was more explicit where they like kissed and Kiss, stuff. Yeah. And apparently that tested so poorly in the test audience. Like people loathed Carmen because of that. Like, how dare she do that right after her ex boyfriend dies? <laughs> you <know? Right. laughs> she obviously breaks up with him because she's into Xander, even in this cut. Like, oh, I always read it. She she breaks up with him because she's career driven because that's she's much more bought into the. That's what she says. But I think it's uh, I think it's true. Listen, this is maybe my dad coming through. But <laughs> in, the, in this edit, of, a run. in this edit of the movie, you know, my wife, we're not a jealous type of couple for them. For the most part, we're humans. Right. But if she was like even sitting at my dinner table having coffee with a guy I didn't know when I got home from the podcast, I'd be like, Oh, what's up? You know, like I wouldn't think anything of it. Right. Uh, and yet the way that this is shot specifically with her little smirks and stuff, it just, and like, she's holding his lapel when he comes up to her at the prom or whatever, you know, it's just like, there's these little, like in a, I don't know, my opinion, like extra mile inappropriateness to their interactions. You know what I mean? That seems Strange. It's not just like a guy that she's talking to. It's just she's got that little smirk. And Johnny Rico, are you jealous? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe a little she bit. She won't tell him that she loves him. My dad's not home tonight. You know, like, and then she wouldn't say she loved him. Sure. And then like uh, Xander is like very, I'm sorry, Steve. I got to disagree with you. Like there's a scene where Xander is, she's like, maybe it's fate that we ended up piloting together. And he's like, no, I found out it was you specifically. And I made this happen because <laughs> I would like to have sex hey, with you. 
I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying maybe both things are true. Because I think even if Xander wasn't there, I think she would have broken up with Johnny Rico. Because okay. that's all she wants Bad to do statement, is fly. I think I'll agree with, yeah. for sure. But I also think that she was, which is fair. She did the right thing. Like if she's in a monogamous relationship with somebody and she would like to have sex with someone else, uh, yeah, I you got to go ahead and give him a quick call and break up with him. And then you're good. Like, hey, sorry, but Patrick Muldoon's my my <laughs> my guy. Also. Yeah. So I'm with you. That's a, I think that's a true statement though, that she definitely would have broken up with him regardless. Also, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? They're in high school. Yeah. They're not going to make it. No, <laughs> no, definitely just break up. What football jock and. Well, she, she's not a cheerleader. No, she's just, she's she's like just a genius. A, she's just a genius uh, flight lady. She's just a hot goes, math whiz. Yeah. What? Yeah. What, uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah. We've all had a hot math whiz and that never works out. I take a hot math whiz every time I go to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 it only made like 38% sense. I <laughs> and I still liked it. Any hoozle. Dizzy. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I love Dizzy. Dizzy's the best. She's a little too into Rico. I, I agree. She is. Diz, don't die on me. At least I got to have you. Johnny, don't let me go. I just wanted to have sex with Rico one time. My life was worth it. <laughs> now, come on. It's that. He had subpar dick, and we all know it. I, I, that's one of the funniest jokes in the movie is when she's like, 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. I've got a lot. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, so the movie opens. We, are you ready for this? I'm ready. We're on the same page. It starts with one of the propaganda videos. I'm doing my part. And it shows Clendathu invasion footage. This is in the future now. The reporter dies. Kitten dies. We don't know any of these people yet. And then it cuts to one year earlier after Rico. It's an hurt. ugly planet. A bug, bug planet. planet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Rico is drawing in class. Uh, we get the one-armed uh, teacher, Mr. Radchak. And is that how you say it, Radchak? Every time they said it, I feel like I couldn't. It's kind of a D sound, Radchak, but it, it's spelled with like an S Z C. Yeah, it's it's a yeah R A S C Z A K. So my tactic was just to say it quickly enough, Radchak. and you still just called me out on it. So <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I kicked you in the knees on that Re one. Reading it, it's Radchak, right? Red, but it, they kind of put a check to yeah, it. Yeah, Radchak's ref, ref Radchak. Next. Radchak's ref next. Red Jacks Roughnecks yeah. <laughs> from Watkins. Hoorah. Hoorah. Uh, hoo <laughs> Did you go Al Pacino on me? <laughs> He's got a <laughs> great ass. Can you imagine if Al Pacino was this guy? I'd have loved it. I'm telling you, violence solves every problem. <laughs> <laughs> Never pass up a good thing. <laughs> I think you should fuck her. Uh, <laughs> only people Did you get my box with a violin in it. <laughs> <laughs> only people who serve can vote. Violence is great. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then Carmen sends him back like the bubble gum blowing up them ruining the kiss animation. What and, a tease. And the whole time Diz is just like angrily staring at them interacting like I want Rico. That's my boy. She's like trying to see the drawing and shit. But Car and by the way, Dina Meyer's gorgeous. Yeah. And the whole point. The whole thing about Rico being like, ew, is so fucking weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Literally such a stunning woman. Yeah. Oh my God. Did you just join this for me? Like you would be lucky if that was the case. Like she's a stunningly gorgeous woman who plays football and she's way cooler. She's so much cooler than Carmen. I'm just saying. Carmen's and and Rico's like dumb as shit. There's nothing in common with Carmen. Like let Carmen be yeah, let her with be the smart thing. pretty boy. Like yeah. they're, they're, you guys are doing the right things he's, here. He's got those 90 bangs. There's like little, mm -hmm. little things that flop oh, to the he side. If he frosted those tips and put them boys up. Oh my God. <sighs> Baby. Bye, bye, bye to my chastity. <laughs> 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 that was Laird. <laughs> Write that down. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah. So Carmen did great in math. She's trying to join fleet. Rico's dumb as shit. He got a 37%. Um, and okay, then fucking Carl, Carl runs up. Played by Neil Patrick Harris. Like, you got a 35? Hey, everyone. Puts it on the big screen. <laughs> Look at this dumb shit. Why is that a feature? That it can do <laughs> the that? wall, yeah. Why does it? Yeah, it's all public anyway. Because fascism, baby. That's true. That's like, hey, well, the people got to know there's dumb, dumb people in our society. Mm -hmm. Mobile infantry guys. Take them to the camps. Carl can read minds. We find that out pretty quickly. There's like a little one one off comment there. I forget, but there's a bit of dialogue where he's like, did you read her mind? Oh, because he says Dizzy wants him. Yeah. 
It's like it's Disney. so funny because like Disney wants to, and then you can see Disney in the background just scowling at them. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, really? Did you use your mind powers for that one? <laughs> nope, I can just tell. Uh, and then it cuts to them dissecting a giant bug. Uh, oh, it's an Arkelian sand beetle. An Arkelian sand beetle, which looks like the bug that uh, precedes the brain bug at the end. The, yeah, they're like they act as the litter for the brain bug. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of them skittering. I think that because he eventually sees one uh, towards the end, I think it's He's a callback. Like, huh. like, oh wait, I know that bug. That's I've, been, a, I've been inside one. That's a <laughs> <laughs> that was the elbow deep in one. <laughs> yeah, he's having a ball dissecting this bug, and it's like comically. I wouldn't gross. have been able to do that either. It's got, got the stickiest goo on all of its entrails, and that weird ass teacher. Is she blind? I think she, she has, has like, like something like wrong with burnt, her eyes. Burnt yeah. eyes or something from battle, probably. Yeah, because all she's the, like, all the, oh, I fucking love bugs. <laughs> they're so cool. But Carmen is like, she can't, she can't hang. She vomits. Nerves of steel, huh? Because you got to have nerves of steel to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, and we get cut to Carl testing his psychic shit on Rico. And I assume what he's trying to do there is implant the idea of the card in, in Rico's mind. So mm -hmm. he's testing his own powers, his own ability to do that. And Rico just won't participate, you know, or isn't doing it successfully. He's not trying to see if Rico's a psychic, right? But Carl also says that he hasn't been able to uh, can't do use humans. his psychic abilities on humans. He can do it to animals because he's yeah. got that um, ferret, little weasel, ferret, ferret, Cyrano. <sighs> Don't call him a weasel. Sorry. I hate that. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean that. Sorry, Cyrano. Cyrano. Uh, but yeah, he can, he implants the mind that there's like a treat or something up his mom's skirt. And so Cyrano's like, ooh, and he runs up there and you know, had to reach Carl, havoc. Get off, Carl, Cyrano, get off my leg. Go bug mom, Cyrano. Uh, and we get that crazy ass future football. It's like a rugby soccer football where they do crazy flips and stuff. Yeah. Indoors. Um, it's like if you took a football player and also they were world-class gymnasts as well mm -hmm. who can do like crazy front and back flips and stuff around people who are trying to tackle you. I love it. It's pretty cool. Remember that uh, that period in the late 90s, early 2000s when they tried to make arena football a thing? Yeah, they yeah. still do, I think. It's still around, but there was like a heavy push like, oh, you think football is cool? <laughs> what about if it was inside? What about that? If it was like rollerball kind of like if they did a futuristic thing to it. I think they I think they did, actually. I don't know. I'd like on paper. I'm in, you know? Sure. Like I'd watch this. Yeah. Especially I mean, if Dizzy was the quarterback. Oh, my God. So awesome. I'm in. Cause, Favorite yeah, team. Because uh, uh, Rico is pretty, you know, he's talented, but he's distracted because Carmen's in the stands. He's so jealous. And she's making flirty eyes with the other team's quarterback. Yeah, he gets like thrown Xander. into the stands and stands up. And he's like, what's up, girl? And she's like, what's up? <laughs> he's like, you know, I like to fly planes. And she's like, oh, shit, me too. Me too. He's like, yeah. Hook me, uh, look me up when you get into the academy, girl. Yeah. I Maybe. fly out tomorrow. I'll just be an instructor already somehow. How about that? I'm a senior. You're, a, <laughs> you're a, uh, another senior. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, how is he as an instructor by the time? I assume he like tested into it or something, you know? Maybe, maybe his family owns planes. He's been flying them all his life. I don't maybe know. He's, he's one of those kids that graduate in the winter time, like in December somehow. You know those kids that like somehow get enough credits no. to graduate high school early and you're like, how did you, how, People, what happened? Everyone barely graduated at my school. Definitely not early. <laughs> well, same my valedictorian quoted Lord of the Rings, though, at our graduation. That was nice. What was the quote? He stood up there in his little cap and gown. Uh, Caleb got to the microphone and he said, I don't know half of you half as well as I should like. Great. And I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. And all of the nerds went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody else was like, huh? And yeah. And the other half of the room booed. <laughs> it, Boo, was great. it was a great line. It was a fucking great line. Um. But yeah, Carmen, I think a little flirty with the flight boy, but ultimately the Tigers win. Dizzy reigns them in with that cool play that comes back later. Chekhov's play, if you she, will. She's a great team leader. Maybe she should be a squad leader. They never give her a chance to. And the guy who already failed, like, Ace, you want to do it again? And it's like, <laughs> nah, I'm just here to fight. And then it's like, okay, Dizzy, then you. It's so funny to me. Yeah. It's like, she was the obvious choice. She's like the obvious choice the whole time, but like no one ever even considers giving it to her, even no. though like the, the squad would die a million times without her. <laughs> Nope. nope. Uh, Rico with his parents, they want him to go to Harvard. Uh, he's like a very wealthy kid. Uh, he's a depot baby. I don't know what they do, but they don't want him to have service, right? But they're not, they're, uh, they're civilians, not citizens, right? So they don't vote? Yeah. I would assume because they're so anti, like. But they're rich. 
Sure. Yeah. I, I, they might be like, maybe they bought their way into citizenship. They, yeah. They or they yeah they could have bought their way to citizenship. Yeah. He could be. A maybe member, they just maybe. don't vote. They're like, ah, I just run a business. But if he hadn't joined the military for Carmen, he would have died. That's or true. Unless he would have been on Zegama Beach, little, which also got destroyed, though. That's true. Yeah, Zegama Beach. I love the way the dead says that. As a kid, it tickled me, and it still does to this day. Zegama Beach. <laughs> I've always wanted to go there. Like, it just tickles me. I do love his reaction because he, he he immediately becomes Tina Fey in 30 Rock. Where he's like, I would like to go to there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, no, I want to join the military. <laughs> you almost had me with Zegama oh, Beach. Oh, my God. I love Zegama <laughs> Beach. I really want to know what Zegama Beach looks like. It has to be like fire, right? I bet there's some like Starship Troopers, Wikipedia type stuff about it. Ooh, that's, that's true. You want me to look that up? At this moment? Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Zegama Beach. How do you, how do you think you pronounce that? Ze Zegama Beach. It's Z-E-G-E-M-A. Apparently that's a record label. Really? <laughs> Zegama Beach is located in the outer rings on which the... Oh, this is some deep lore. The Roughnecks possibly fought against the Arachnids before Rico, Ace, Levy, and Dizzy transferred to their unit. Oh, they definitely did because that's where Watkins is. They said they... We're recently there. And he's like, how is it? And he's like, it's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. Uh, yeah, it's function is a resort world. Atmosphere breathable, climate lush, but that's literally the only any, the only stuff that's on the Wikipedia. Mm. Yeah, not, we don't know anything about it. I want a sequel. Uh, there are like six sequels to this movie. <laughs> oh, no. it's How come every movie we do this has sequels I've never heard of that are terrible? Oh, they're... All Have you watched them? Bad. I've watched most of them. I haven't seen all of them, but they're all really fucking bad. They don't know it's a satire type sequels. Um, th well, the first couple, yes. I think the later because eventually they become CGI like animated sequels. Really, those aren't terrible, but they're not great. Uh, the 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 first sequel that they made this is like really like awful. Is awful, it Casper Van Dien or anybody? Um, is it Gary Busey's kid? No, no. <laughs> Jack, Jake, Jake Busey, Jake Busey, uh, stranger things alumni, Jake Busey. Um, yeah, he's, the, he's one of the newspaper people that picks. Oh, on that's answer. right. That's right. Uh, I was but, thinking Demogorgon. <laughs> he would be the, a good Demogorgon. No, the, um, uh, the, the, the first movie, I think the only returning character is the captain that gets cut in half. But she plays a completely different character, but it's the same actress. Really? Yeah. But she plays a, but it's By like, the door. Yeah. But she's like, that's obviously the same person. Uh, but Casper Van Diem, eventually he voices Rico in the animated movies. And I think Dizzy comes back as like a flashback in one of the animated movies as well. Um, oh my God. There's Starship Troopers 2, Hero, Hero of the Federation, 3, Marauder, and then Starship Troopers Invasion, and then Starship Troopers Traitor of Mars just came out in 2017, as well as an animated television series, Roughnecks Starship Troopers. I watched Roughnecks when I was a kid. That's an old animated TV show. I yeah. watched that as a kid and it's actually like awesome. That's insane to me. I need to do some deep research in these fellas. Now the animation of the Roughnecks TV show is rough. Because nice. uh, it's that like early 2000s, late 90s, like, like CGI. Fantasy Spirit Within kind of, Final Fantasy Spirit Within. No, do you remember Beast Wars? Yeah. It looks like that. Hmm. Like that's the level of animation, which, uh, it, it, so it doesn't age well, but the story is actually like surprisingly, uh, I mean, again, I haven't seen it in, in a long time, but I remember it being like, wow, this is really, really good. Yeah. Steve style. Yeah. Steve style. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he, when he grinds on a skateboard, yeah. Steve style, Ooh. <laughs> kick foot buttery. Uh, yeah. So he, they zeg him a beach. Then we cut to the dance. It's like a prom. This might be the last time we see each other. Uh, Diz sneaks around Carmen to dance with Rico and basically, you know, she's always trying to seduce him, get him in. Like she loves him, you know? And, and Dizzy's going to, is she going to go pro in the football? Yeah. She's talking about playing in Tokyo, all kinds of places. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, oh, I got to go talk to professor Goebbels. <laughs> Rico. <laughs> and she's good to see you. She's like, all right. And he's like, all right, Diz, you're the best. Why do we never get together, Johnny? I don't do that. We're friends. <laughs> Uh, so then he goes up to talk to, to Radchak and he's like, uh, you shouldn't be such a bitch. You should do whatever you want. That's one of the few freedoms we have. Yeah, make your own decision. That's the only freedom we have. I'm implying figure, you should, figure things out yourself. I'm implying you should join the military. Yeah. Uh, and then 
Carl sneaks up to talk to Diz, which I really enjoy. And she's like, oh my God, <laughs> which is weird because he can like read her mind probably. And Xander sneaks into a different school's prom. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Why is he there? Why are you here? <laughs> uh, yeah. We don't know that it's a different school. Maybe they just have multiple teams that play each other. That's true. Well, yeah. That's true. Maybe it's just like the the whole city for all the schools throw one prom just in the city streets. Yeah. Maybe. Wait, it's Buenos Aires. Yeah. All of the, the the fascist kids, at least. Yeah, Carmen's there talking to fucking Xander, is my notes. Uh, and Diz is so openly angry I when they're it. dancing. <laughs> Just, she's dancing with Carl like... <laughs> <laughs> so wild. <laughs> uh, but then Rico, Carl, and Carmen are all signing up for the military together. It's promised to always stay friends. Uh, and then that's when Carmen's like, my dad is not home. Oh, you know what that means? We could stay up all night watching Star Wars. Yeah, we can. You love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we do these special editions? Yes. Yeah, baby. Because he's not home. He's not home. He, you know he hates those he normally. Hates, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he really hates what George Lucas did to the special editions. This episode was sponsored by Better Help. Folks, it's 2024. What does everybody do in the new year? They make resolutions. They set goals. How about we don't do that? I mean, you can. It's obviously nice to have goals, but it's also a good exercise to focus on things that you like about yourself. You know, not making all those high pressure goals that you might fail at and just feel worse. You can set smaller goals. And I think therapy can be a good way to access things that you enjoy about your life and focusing on the positive, the gratitude. And BetterHelp is a good way to do that. If you've never given BetterHelp a try, it's it's therapy that's entirely online. You can do it all from your home and access a therapist by filling out a questionnaire. And if you end up not liking that therapist, you can switch. Again, along with the theme of this ad, uh, no pressure whatsoever. They're not going to have their feelings hurt by it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash streaming things. Spring is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So how about we spring into action and give a special shout out to all of the patrons who keep the lights on over here at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of March. Thank you. Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Sven. 7, Jay Scramo, Bloth Pump, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things and and let's get back to the show. And then we get that super fascist, fascist swearing in ceremony where it's like, the, if you listen closely to the allegiance pledge or whatever, it's like, we will serve for a period of not less than two years and as many more as is required. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, absolutely not. That's open ended contract, baby. Uh, but Carmen makes pilot. Carl gets games in theory. Ooh. Next time I see you, I might have to salute you. And I love the face Neil Patrick Harris makes like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You're beneath me already. Yeah. Uh, and then Rico got infantry. Infantry has made me the man I am today. Uh, and he's missing all of his limbs. Um, and then they vowed always be friends. Sorry, I, I got ahead of myself there. But then, uh, you know, Rico gets cut off by his dad. You join the military. You are cut off. Boy. Go out that door. Don't ruin your life over a silly little girl who wants to look good in a uniform. Ah. My dad was right. You, you do, do look, look good in a uniform. uniform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He says that to her like a day after they die. <laughs> so wild. Yeah. Uh, Rico sees uh, Carmen as they ship out. He tells her, I love you. She doesn't reply. But then he's like, just say it, please. <laughs> just say it once. <laughs> Try it on for size. So sad. And then she does say it. I love you. Okay. Here you go. Please don't talk to me anymore. Bye. -bye. <laughs> uh, and we get another propaganda video. This one is the the best one, I think, where it's letting the kids hold the guns. Who wants to hold a gun? Handing out bullets and stuff. They're just laughing. And then we get the murder trial, quote unquote, execution being being televised on all networks. And then they uh, have the, the ad you, for psychics. If you think you're a psychic, 
maybe you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and the guy who they have playing the psychic with the goatee, he's a uh, Lassiter from Psych. And so it's like, oh, Lassie, he's in this movie. And do, you, yeah. do you remember when like, maybe it still is, but it, I'm just not in it. But do you remember when magic was like super popular? And I would sit when <laughs> I would sit and watch like David Copperfield shows oh, yeah. and stuff. And like, do you remember the guy that looked like that guy? And he would put playing cards up on the screen and it would be mm -hmm. like, put your finger on one. Don't move it. Remember what it was. And then like the cards would start to disappear and it would stay. The last one would be the one you chose. And you'd be like, whoa, yeah, I can read your minds through the screen. You remember that shit? I do. I was into that stuff. Dude, dude. the 90s, because that was also the peak of like a uh, magician comedian, where it was like always yeah. comedians who had like a magic trick. Yeah. Uh, what, what was that one guy's name uh, that died like five or six years ago? Ooh. Um, I don't know. He had like this silly girl apprentice uh, helper and he had like a, not a mullet, but like long hair. He's a bigger guy and he was always a comedian magician, but he was actually really good at oh, magic. Oh, that guy died. Did he have like a goatee? Yeah. Oh, he died? I'm almost positive. Wasn't it like the great Carl or something? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Uh, but yeah, I watched all that shit. I was super into magic. Uh, David Copperfield is going to make a building disappear <laughs> tonight at nine. I'm like, mom, I got to stay up till 10. He's going to make a building disappear. Oh my God. You know, it's going to be so cool. <laughs> Where is it going to go? Or he would like make uh, airplane, you know, airplanes disappear and shit. It was a whole thing. <laughs> the amazing Jonathan. Jonathan. Oh, I didn't know he died. Is he, he is dead, right? I'm not. Yeah, being, he died okay. in 2022. I didn't know he died. That's mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's anti-arachnid propaganda in that video as well. When it, it shows the censored cow and then like the Mormon colony that's been decimated, but they didn't censor it. Um, <laughs> I love how, yeah, it's a bunch of Mormons. They established Fort Joseph Smith. <laughs> it's, like, it's pretty funny. But no, this isn't obviously satire. No. Uh, and we cut to boot camp. Sergeant Zim played by the man, Clancy, Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown. God, I love Zim. Clancy Brown is so cool. He breaks that fucking big guy's arm. Who thinks they got what it takes to knock me down? I think I think I do, sir. He just immediately breaks his arm. Go to the mess hall. Medic. Pain is in your mind. And then Diz shows up. Yeah. What thinks it is the best? What makes you think you got what it takes? And she's like, I'll fight you right now. She just like and then the She actually gets like, a lick on him though. She does. And immediately the girl's like, Oh, that's that's what it takes to be squad commander. Mm -hmm. That girl's got it. Right there. Rico's pissed that she showed up. <laughs> And then uh, Gary Busey's kid, <laughs> <laughs> he wants squad leader as well. It's so funny because he clearly. He's so definitely Gary Busey's Gary kid. Gary Busey's kid. Yeah. It's, not, it's so funny. It's wild. And his name's Ace. Yep. Uh, but he, the Zim knocks her out, but she does, she does well. Rico laughs at her pain. Uh, <laughs> I like the big guy's like arm juice too. That's healing it. That's the cast now. They got, uh, what's it called? A back to tank kind of thing. Oh Yeah. Sure. Basically. Why not? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Ace cuts in line and eating the muck. And I love that this is how he and Rico become friends because he cuts in line and he goes, hey, buddy, why don't you get back in line? And, and they kind of stare at each other like you think they're going to alpha off. And Ace is like, ha, I think you deserve to be friends with me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, good for me. Ace is kind of a he's kind of he's a likable guy. He's a likable dude. Uh, Rico shits on Diz at that moment. Shits on Diz. Can't sit with me. Can't sit here. Say it's taken. <laughs> it's a dick. Like, come on, man. It's like the only person you actually know. Uh, it's Diz. She's awesome. So then she knocks Rico and Ace into the mud as they argue about which one of them is going to be squad leader. Uh, and Ace makes the mistake of asking Zim about why, why we use knives in a nuke fight. All you have to do is press a button. And then, yeah, Zim just like picks up a knife, like <laughs> recruit, hold your hand against that wall. Put your hand against that wall. So he does. And then he just throws a knife into his hand. Like if you, <laughs> what was it? If you take out his hand, he can't press a button. If you disable his hand. Yeah. Medic. Uh, I love that. Like nobody could play that role as well as Clancy Brown did. He's so good. Your adversary will be unable to press a button if you disable his hand. And he's just sitting there in the back like, ugh. Uh. And then we get the infamous shower, the co-ed shower scene, uh, which was Verhoeven's way of saying none of these fascists would have any libido. So this would be perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. And he shot this. Yeah. Completely in the nude. He and his cinematography were nude with the actors. And we learned a lot about uh, the squad. Yeah. Why need, they're there. You also need to learn. You need to have a license to have children. Yeah. Um, 
Breckenridge once is a farmer and he's like, I guess they go on big. Um, a, a, a di- a yeah, he's di- got a big dick is implied in that scene. I tried to write down their names, but I know autocorrect fucked me on a couple of them. Um, I'm just going to call her D. D wants to go into politics. That was Jana. Uh, Shujimi wants to go to Harvard, but it, it'll cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> you wonder what happens to that guy later on in the movie. Oh, he does lose an arm and a leg, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. And then the one woman wants to have babies. Ace is going to go career. Kitten wants to become a, uh, a reporter, a writer, a journalist of some type. Mm. That's why he's like really nosy and trying to get into everybody's business. Oh, yeah. And then uh, they ask, well, Rico, why did you join? And he he doesn't want to say. Why but don't you mind your business? Dizzy shows up. Oh, he joined because of a girl. Is it you? Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. Definitely not. Yeah, it was. Remember how he's really angry when I showed up? Yeah. <laughs> you guys aren't very. It will be because of me. You aren't paying attention. <laughs> so then he sends a video to Carmen and, and it cuts to Carmen watching it, which is a classic way to transition, but I love it. I appreciate it. Classic. Because then it takes her point of view from there on. There's a big race with, I think, Amy Smart to see who's going to fly. <laughs> uh, she's crazy. Is The other flights. Uh, the flight people are really upset to see that Carmen is flying. And this is the most pure sort of like, ah, we're just fascists in the military. This is so fun. Like he really does make a meal out of making service in this world look so fun. Like, wow, we're going to have some great memories and bonding together right before they flip that switch and make everything horrifying and awful. Yeah. It's really well done. Everybody's having a blast. Yeah. She gets to fly the big boy today. Xander is teaching her how to fly. She's like, he's like, I heard you a little wild on the stick. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve's like, it's just innocent. <laughs> Y'all are wild. <laughs> <laughs> She's not broken up with Rico at this point. It's true. And he's just talking about how wild she is on the stick. Hey, she's not saying that. And she's like, Papa's not home. <laughs> he's like, what does that have to do with anything? Well, I don't know. So maybe you want to watch Star Wars. Oh, you, you don't know about Johnny's Rocket? <laughs> <laughs> Remember uh, Johnny Rockets? Uh, your career is in my hands. Mm. Ooh. And then they go to light speed. Pretty cool. Mm. I, I'm sure it's been done many times before this, like the whole distension of reality as they approach warp speed. But I like how like the ship lengthens and even their heads like warp a little bit. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, and then we get to fight training with the infantry. Laser tag time. Yeah. Rico's crushing it, right? Uh, flip six, three hole. <laughs> what was it? Flip six, three hole. Yeah. That, that's like a nice little like flip over the guys and shoots them. That's Diz's idea. It's the play that they used to run on the football team. And he does like the dual wield. Uh, do you have any idea at 10 years old, me watching this, how fucking badly I wanted to play laser tag and do flip six, three hole. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever get to play laser tag? Honestly, no, not really. I mean, I did like, but it's, but did you do I got it for Christmas. Flip six, three hole. But they don't like work. The sensors are whack. Oh, yeah. You can like point it at the sky and your buddy will die. Yeah. And it's like, this isn't the same. Well, uh, recently uh, I went to a child's birthday at Urban Air and they have a, uh, honestly, a pretty cool. Were you cool, invited or? I was invited. Just yeah, bored? I, I was just bored. <laughs> Anybody have any birthdays? <laughs> mm. You all are trash. Just uh, running around. Yeah, I went to the, the laser tag. It's pretty cool. And it was actually really I funny. I bet they've got advanced laser tag now. Yeah, it's dope. It's really cool. But, uh, you know, I'm an adult competing against children. So I'm just kind of walking around like, pew, pew, pew. Yeah. But they're so, these fucking kids, <laughs> they're so trash at this game. <laughs> right, right. I'm literally like standing in the corner and they're just up in their You're little camping? fort. They think they're safe. And I'm just like, Headshot, 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 headshot. <laughs> and they're always like, who's killing me? And they're like freaking out. I'm just like, suck, suck. <laughs> or like a kid will shoot out from behind and like, like shoot drinking me. a Manhattan, like, pew, pew, pew. Yep. Or they'll like jump out and like shoot you like, ha ha, I got you. But then like, so you can't shoot them for like 10 seconds, but then they just, like an idiot, they just stand there and you wait for the 10 seconds drop and you shoot them right back. And like, <laughs> sucks to suck. Play bitch games, get bitch prizes. <laughs> Good fun. Good fun being a bully. Yeah, it is great. You didn't let them win at any point? No. <laughs> they got to learn. It's a harsh world out there. It's true. I'm pre- prepping them for the real world. That's right. So he gets squad leader and right as he gets the good news, he gets a message from Carmen that she wants to go career. She doesn't actually explicitly break up with him, but it's everybody knows what's up. They're all watching and shit. And then they awkwardly walk away. Um, I feel so bad for Rico. I love mm. that ADR in the back. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ace is like, nah, man, you did this on your own. Except Diz did most of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they promote him to field uh, squad commander or squad leader or whatever. Mm hmm. And it's just kind of like, he just did what Diz told him to do. She's the real squad leader. That's right. All he did was the flip six, three hole. 
Uh, and then there's a live ammo, ammo simulation. Uh, Breckenridge gets shot in the fucking head. Gnarly. In a gnarly way. Yeah. Removing his helmet at uh, Rico's behest because his helmet's getting in his way. Jana is sent home, I assume, uh, for, oh, being, I th- for being the one that shot him. Oh, I don't know. Uh, do you think they sent her home? Do you think she's like, oh, I killed a guy. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going home. I think they sent her home. Okay. Is my read on that because they talked about it earlier. Like, because it's really you not get her sent fault. Down blah, 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 lane, you know, wash out lane or whatever, you know. Because when you think about it, it's not her fault that he his head was blown uh, off. I mean, she got like she, she got zapped and fell over and like she's being electrocuted. Yeah, but I think they would they were probably arguing you're not safe with weapons if you a little zappy zap made you shoot a teammate, you know. Well, uh, zappy zap, you're not going to get have control of your fingies. I mean, there's a lot of people got zapped, didn't shoot their teammates. Well, I'm not going to say I support Ridge is a big target. I'm sad for Jana because which, what did she want? She wanted to be a politician. That's right. Yeah, that's, she's fine. <laughs> She'll be okay. Uh, the baby lady dies. Gruesome. I want to have a baby. Uh, yeah. She gets knocked into a hole. Yeah. Uh, oh, she runs though. Like a coward. Uh, well, she, she's like, my baby. <laughs> I'm going to have a she's baby. She's not pregnant in that moment. But my baby. That's true. Uh, so Zim, they've already lost two good soldiers. So Zim says he can be salvaged with administrative punishment. So he gets 10 lashes, Oof. uh, and, uh, bite down on the sun. It helps. Honestly, as a kid, like I love this, like Zim is kind of kind in his own way. And I've always been like, uh, I've always found Clancy Brown to be charismatic, you know? Oh yeah. Powerhouse. Uh, and by that, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, it's the guy from Shawshank Redemption is all I knew. Yeah. Um, all the cartoons. He's a great voice actor. But when he says it helps. I know it's like implied that he's been whipped before and like, don't be a bitch. You'll be all right. You know? Yeah. Uh, but then we cut to Carmen hanging out with Xander, having a good time. You can't lick my navs. <laughs> 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 Trying to lick my navs. Um, and then the captain's like, you guys are such a good team. Uh, but you guys they, should bone. They see, yeah, I really feel like you guys should have sex. Uh, they sense a gravity field. Uh Oh, cause the coffee goes Pull sideways. Up. Whoa. It's like a Jurassic park kind of moment. Uh, and then they lose a chunk of their plane on the asteroid, which now what their you were saying is chunk the, of their plane. <laughs> it's a plane chunk, <laughs> a plane, you think, because it's the communications device that gets knocked off. Yeah. So they can't tell the fleet that an asteroid's coming, which mm-hmm. is ostensibly why it hits Buenos Aires. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, but they have that defense thing around the moon. You think they would be able to shoot it still. Yeah, they, they would have see a, it. other, it's not like individual ships need to be out there to spot every rock. Right. That's true. Um, fun little fact, the, the, those big ships, I don't know what you call them, the capital ships that like Xander and Carmen are piloting. Yeah. Uh, there is a Millennium Falcon on those ships. Uh, specifically the, the, the communication tower that gets knocked off. There's a Millennium Falcon just on it, uh, as a little Easter egg really? on all the models. Cause that's kind of where they hide on the, the Star Destroyers and Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. The one gonna, where they hide on. Now. It, you can't really see it in the in the movie because you don't really get a good look at it and it's kind of hard to see, but you can like Google images of the model that they filmed. And yeah, it's a little, it's a little Millennium Falcon. Oh, that's neat. A little homage to Star Wars. When we cut back to Rico, he's packing up, calls his parents. I hope I can come home, but their transmission is terminated. Can we still go to Zegama Beach? Yeah, son. <laughs> you know I still got them tickets? Dude. It's so funny too because the way that it's shot is like, oh, it's dark out. Oh, that's fine. It must be a storm. I love how his parents are clearly at home together, but in opposite rooms. <laughs> oh, hi, son. John, pick up the phone. Rico? <laughs> Zeg- what if he just said Zegama Beach? <laughs> they should have been on Zegama Beach. I got two words for you, boy. <laughs> Zegama Beach. <laughs> Get your trunks ready. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, and Diz is giving him shit. Like, you know, you shouldn't be such a sissy. You took your licks. You can't lick my navs. Actually, you can if you want to. <laughs> but while he's leaving, the troops start running everywhere. And he finds out that Buenos Aires has been wiped off the earth. We're going to war. He goes in to tell the commander that he doesn't want to leave anymore. And Zim, Zim's in there complaining that he wants to fight. The only way you're fighting is if you bust yourself to private. And it's the guy from fucking Breaking Bad. It's Hank, we should yeah. have mentioned. Dean, Dean Norris. I'm sure all of you noticed, but that's so funny to me that it is Hank. Son, you already signed your 1240A. Nothing I can do. And then Zim says, is this your signature, Rico? Yes, yes sir. sir. Didn't look like it to me. <laughs> but I love that moment where he looks at the commander first. Like, is it okay if I am if I do what I'm obviously about to do? And the commander's like, I didn't see it. It's cool. It's a cool scene. Yeah. Doesn't look like it to me. God, I love that guy. God, 
Clancy Brown's a real one. Of the fascists. Yeah. That's my fave. <laughs> if I had to rank all my favorite fascists. Invader Zim is my favorite. <laughs> Invader Zim is right up there, yeah. Uh, we get more propaganda. It's the, the only good bug is a, a dead, dead bug. bug. One of the best scenes in the movie. Uh, Carl is already the military scientist in that the That scene does make me sad. Video. It starts off with a, a dog crushed under rubble, and then it pans up to the guy who goes, only good bug is a dead bug. So theoretically, that guy's dog crushed under rubble, and it makes me sad. Yeah, he's like, I want to kill all the bugs that kill I my would dog. If, 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 if bugs made Pippin under rubble, I'd be like, Pfft. But what about Ellie? I would Venmo the money. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love Ellie. We, we cut to like the kids stomping on cockroaches. Everybody's doing their part. <laughs> the mom is laughing. <laughs> she is psychotic because yeah, the kids are stopped stomping on the bugs <laughs> in the background. That's uh, Verhoeven's idea of Americans and violence. Uh, but, but we cut to uh, Ticondor Ticonderoga Station uh, near the uh, arachnid quarantine zone where everybody's stationed, including the fleet and the infantry. And we see that reporter that like dies soon is interviewing Diz and Ace and Kitten. And then Rico's like, I say, kill them all. Kill them all. Uh, and then they decide they're going to get tattoos together. But first he sees Carmen. Uh -oh. <gasps> My dad was right. You look fucking sexy. Great in the suit. Holy shit. You look good. <laughs> uh, and then he bumps heads with Xander. They fight. Uh, rank is not an issue. Uh, and then they do a little tussle. Do a little good tussle. And then they get their death from above laser tattoos. Bat fight. That's I would like to get this tattoo because I like this movie that much. Death from above? But it's like. Can we like flex when we show it to people? Like I don't have do? any room on my arms, Ooh. as everybody knows. Uh, but I have to get them on my cheeks, cheeks or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> death from above. <laughs> <laughs> but people wouldn't know that it's for, like they wouldn't always know it's a Starship Trooper tattoo. And they would just look like a douchebag tattoo. Your cheeks. More often than you'd think. Uh, uh, clap them. Sometimes I go cheeks first and do a new uh, relationship. <laughs> Hello, friend. I, nice to meet you. <laughs> do I shake your butt? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do. I throw ass. Uh, they get deployed to Clendathu and we see like the, the plasma bug. Oh, those are just batteries. It's going to be random and light. Those aren't random or light. No, someone made a big mistake. A big goddamn mistake. Because uh, like the ships start to explode, and that's not good. Yeah, the the plasma that the bugs shoot out of their butts can just like rip. How does right Carmen through it. get like exploded through the windshield in the face, and then their ship and her is fine later? Like her ship's looking rough, but like right. how did the fire get to her and not the space? I don't know. Maybe it was just like a Star Trek spark. You know how like you know how the command modules oh, like the be ship. sparking all the time. I don't actually without watching Star like, Trek. Like if anything ever happens to the ship, there's a sparks coming off of the the. Whatever you call it, the the view the screens or whatever, the stuff. computers, yeah, yeah, those things are sensitive. They are I instruments. Just, it feels like a <laughs> poor design flaw. Like, <laughs> if you bump anything, <sighs> well, some of these might explode. That's how they're rigged. Uh, but yeah, uh, that happens, and so you kind of think she's dead, and then the infantry lands. They nuke the plasma bugs. Everything's going well. They fight. I, I you notice how it, like takes fucking forever to kill one bug, dude. It takes like one bug at. It needs at least five people with guns on it. Yeah. Uh, uh. Uh, Until like, later. And then, all of a sudden they're just mowing them down. Right. But I love the dude that's like, remember your training and you'll be okay. And that's the first dude that gets just completely annihilated by the and bug. And you will survive. And it's terrible. Like his hands are like, ah, as he's getting just stabbed to it, death. To by his point things. though, he did not remember his training. I think. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then, but Ace is the new acting commander of the unit. Yeah, he's the squad leader. Uh, squad leader, thank you, because of Rico, Rico's little mishap on the training ground. Yeah, when he kills, when Breckenridge dies, you can hear Zim yell, uh, Rico, you are relieved of command, is the first thing that he says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you suck. Yeah. Wait, I mean, I could not have seen anybody fail more utterly. Wow. In my 10 years of doing this, no one's ever died on this course, and somehow you did it. You, you got someone killed. So hard. But Ace is now the commander, but he's freezing up because these bugs are fucking scary, dude. Can you imagine this Gnarly. things coming at you? Yeah. Uh, uh, but then, you know, Rico is such a brilliant tactician who deserves command above Diz that he says, kill, kill them, them all. all. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot what we we're doing. <laughs> Which at least he's not scared, I guess. But, you know. Yeah, so Jimmy's a little too... Um, over eager. You want some? You, you want, want some? some? You want some? <laughs> and yeah, they literally like rip up his legs and arms. He gets chopped to pieces. He's, he's, it's gnarly what Did happens to that dude. No. no. Yeah, he's uh, a little too overzealous, man. He, he left the squat. I, well, my note is, I'm being nice. And my note is, Sujimi is a fucking idiot. 
Uh, he, he was definitely not getting into Harvard regardless. No, <laughs> no. Uh, baby lady runs and falls in the hole. Uh, gets dragged into it. It's dragged in. Probably, probably not doing well. Yeah, we can assume yeah, we don't I, see yeah. her die. Yeah. Maybe she's hanging out with bugs, raising bug babies. Yeah. Maybe, maybe she finally lived her dream. We noticed her, her, you know, matronly skills, mm -hmm. you know, so that's her matriarch. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's raising our bug babies. Yeah. Uh, kitten gets ripped up. Well, they have a general retreat and then kitten. We've seen all everything else that happens from a different, from the camera's point of view, which is kind of neat. Yeah. I like that. Uh, if we so see this is the different five, point the first of view five now. minutes of the movie that, yeah. that terrified me as a child, but now we see it from a different point of view. The intro reporter guy, kitten and the, the camera guy all go down. By the way, the shotgun way more effective should have been using that the whole time, mm -hmm. but that's neither here nor there. And then he looks like he dies, but apparently he was saved by rad check. Yeah. Uh, there, we see more propaganda, a hundred thousand dead in, in the one first hour. hour. Yeah. Not good. The, the sky marshal resigns. Sky they, marshal get a, they get a new one. Mm -hmm. Uh, top Maru. Is that her name? Yeah. She thinks that there's a bug that thinks a bug we haven't seen yet. Right? We must understand the bug. Mm -hmm. Roger Young is the ship that Carmen and, uh, Xander fly on. It's bizarrely. Okay. Even though we saw it blow up, um, <laughs> and Carmen is hurt, but she's kind of okay. And there's chaos at Ticonderoga Station, blown up ships and shit everywhere. Yeah. There's some wounded, most dead, because bugs don't take prisoners. Mm -hmm. And why aren't there more wounded? Bugs don't take prisoners. And we see that the casualties are in the three hundred thousand. Rico is listed as deceased. Yep. And uh, yeah, yeah. but then Diz sees him in the tank. He says, "You're dead." Oh, isn't that funny? And she blows. Mm, three days, you'll be out of here. I'm gonna kiss the tank. Of all the people that are injured, because they do show a large amount of people who are injured yeah. in that room. Uh, why does Rico get the sweet bathtub that fixes all ailments? Rich boy. Mm. He gets the back to tank. Oh, he's a rich kid. Throw him in the back to tank. He's got that thigh wound, maybe. Uh, and then we get the a new unit. Heard the lieutenant's a real nut buster and they punch him in the face because they love their lieutenant. They love him. Zegama Beach is gone. And uh, yeah, lieutenant even saved Rico. Saved your ass. And it's Rad Jack. It's oh, Rad my Jack. God. oh my God. Oh my God. It's the teacher. He's back in action. Everyone, he has got one rule. Everyone fights. No, no one, one quits. quits. If you don't do your job, I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you myself. Mm -hmm. He's And he's real about that. Yeah. He does that later. He does. Uh, welcome to the Roughnecks. Red Jack Roughnecks. Uh -huh. I love that shit, dude. I ain't gonna lie. When I was a kid, oh my God, I'll shoot you. That's great. He's gonna shoot him. Because <laughs> uh, the whole line that comes back later, I really did dig as a kid, where it's like, uh, Rico, you're promoted and uh, until you die or I find someone better. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's just, that's a good line. Uh, but, why wouldn't he just always have that prosthetic arm, by the way, that he has now? Like what in class? He probably could have used two hands for books and probably, stuff too. Probably gets itchy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's cool, like the way the camera opens up on that, and then you know, it's Michael fucking Ironsides when it when it pans up or tilts up. One of the coolest voices of all time. It's great, man. I love his voice. It's good stuff. But yeah, the they're they're the military is kind of reevaluating how they do instead of like just full force going after Clendathy, the home world of the bugs, they're going to start on some of the outer worlds and work their way in. So they're going to now invade this planet called Tangu Arila. Planet P we get to later. Uh, but yeah, so the Watkins gets a little carried away and like shoots a whole clip on one bugs hole. <laughs> yeah. And then they nuke it. Uh, but uh, no, Area M4 is under bug attack, so they run back, and there's like this fucking kaiju bug. You got a bug problem, ma'am? It's a. <laughs> it's funny. I love it. And then it's, it's called a tanker that pops out and fucking melts that lady's arm. And then Rico jumps on the back of it, makes a hole with his bullets, and then drops a grenade in it. It's really impressive. And that's when he gets uh, awesome. promoted to corporal until he's dead or finds someone better. Where'd you learn to do that? Don't you remember? I was catching another team. That yeah, doesn't help me. <laughs> that has nothing to do with what I, I don't just remember went. you having to do that on the football field. <laughs> uh, and then he tries to promote Ace to fucking squad leader. And Diz is standing right there. I know. And he's like, okay, since you're the only one left, how about the woman? How about <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, thanks, man. I've only been giving you every successful tip you've had so far in this movie. Dang. Thanks. Uh, they have a big party after the battle. Ooh, a violin. I, when I tell you, like, I have these distinct <laughs> memories of watching this at 10 years old and just remember, just thinking, God, I really want to 
play with that violin. Because it's like neon green. Yeah, that football looks so cool. Bit. I want to play football with these guys. <laughs> yeah, because Radchek's like, I expect the best and I give the best. Have fun. And like he busts out a keg. <laughs> Heroin for everybody. <laughs> uh, and I love the part where Diz comes up and she's like, want to hang out? And he's like, no, nah, not right now, Diz. And then t- fucking Radchek comes up. Rico. I think you should fuck her. <laughs> like basically, you know what I mean? You, you once asked me for advice and I kind of ignored you. Well, <laughs> here's my advice. Go fuck her. <laughs> Honestly. Never pass up a good thing. Good advice. Uh, I, I do love when they when they open up the, the box of toys with like the football and everything and there's the violin. I just love how Ace has that. There's like an ADR line of Ace like, oh, this one's for me. <laughs> Me up. They did the research, buddy. <laughs> uh, so he takes her in his tent and uh, Watkins was was trying to get on her. You know what I mean? When he walks up and he's like, here, you take the beer. And he's like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. But she says, I love you, Johnny. And he doesn't say it. He doesn't say it back. Uh, Lieutenant busts in as soon as they're naked and says, it's time to move out. And, and I meet me at the LZ in 10 minutes. And then he's like, wait, who's, her. who's in your bed? <laughs> what if it was Watkins? <laughs> Red checks. Well, next make that 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, make it 20 minutes when he sees that they're there together. And then he says, we can do it. Cause she, yeah, she looks at like 20 minutes and he's like, we can do it. I, I didn't last that long. And I just want to say no shit. <laughs> I could have done the 10 and that's including packing up and being ready. I'd have been (laughs) got what I need to do, sir. I would have been early. I would have walked out right behind rad check (laughs) and said, all right. Great advice, sir. (laughs) Yeah. Damn Rico. (laughs) Just saying. Oh my God. I would have beat rad check there. (laughs) <laughs> Did I just leave you with that beautiful woman, Rico? Yes, sir. All finished, sir. Pretty sure she had a great time, sir. And she's like, right I don't there, think like, she did. I did not. <laughs> I've been chasing this ass for so many years, and that's what it was. Honestly, yeah, that's what you get for <sighs> for liking men. Disappointment. <laughs> I did write down, like, dude, Diz going straight after them nips. Did you see her? Did I see her? When he take he take he takes off his shirt and she's like yes. zoom, like latched. Like, yes. dang girl. And dizzy. I'm not I, I didn't I didn't hate it. I don't hate it either. I was just like, <laughs> girl. Nippies. And the whole like taking her shirt half off and leaving her uh blindfolded with it. Mm-hmm. That's hot. Yeah. That's hot. Word. Verhoeven knows what's up. He's Ooh. like, do this move. <laughs> Americans, I don't want to have a boring sex. I don't know. even know why if that's his accent. <laughs> this is what I do. I am Dutch. I like to take the shirt off <laughs> and they cannot see. They cannot mm. see this. But you kiss them. <laughs> <laughs> but you kiss them. Men like their nipples suck too. Mm. Suck the nipples. At least, is that, uh, am I the only one? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? New this camera guy, you get me. Oh, I do. Oh. <laughs> the camera guy is sitting there with the camera and somebody's sucking his nipple. <laughs> yeah. This is what I make the grips do. <laughs> Where's my best boy? <laughs> grip the nip. <laughs> grip the nips. That's what you need to grip. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. But a very safe set, I'm sure. Uh, also, anyway, any hoozle. They have sex very quickly to them as quickly. At least 20 minutes. So they can't contact General Owen, who is the one that sent out the distress signal that was the cock blocking maneuver. Oh, we got flying bugs now. What? Uh Uh-oh. That is apparently the sergeant. Is a corporal below a sergeant? Because I didn't think so. I guess it is. I think it is. Yeah. So the lieutenant ends up shooting that guy in the chest. I think he purposely led that sergeant to his death. To promote Rico? Yeah. I feel it because I think that's something that dude would do. And every there's a couple of moments in the earlier in the movie where that sergeant talks to Radchek and he's just giving this look like this fucking guy. Like the way <laughs> really and then he's and then he sees the rocks tumbling, and then as soon as he sees the rocks tumbling, he's like, Hey, why don't you go up there and get a signal, kid? Oh yeah. And then as soon as he gets attacked, he's like, Give me that gun. <laughs> Here we go. Unexpe- Rico, you're promoted. High five. I'd expect any of you to do the same to me. Um, yeah, Rico's now sergeant. 
somebody really hump the bunk. <laughs> that was one of the, I think Watkins says that. Yeah. I was like, what? Hump the bunk. I mean, we all have, but was that a bad thing? Rico, <laughs> <laughs> Rico finds a, a new bug in the chow hall. And I think it's the Arkelian scud beetle or whatever. Yeah. Um, but anyway, one of the guys has his brain sucked out and the general is hiding in the fridge and you can see that the lieutenant is very disappointed in that kind of cowardice. Mm -hmm. But what, what, what could he have done? You know? Yeah. He's, he, he's got important information valuable to the Federation. He's also correct about that. But just in general, what could he have done? You know, everybody's dead. One man against millions of bugs. Mm -hmm. Come on. But no, you're supposed to go down. Uh, look, Lieutenant is literally going to shoot the general because he's like, then just shoot me. And he's like, OK, I All love right, doing right. that. I just did it. And it's funny that Rico's the one that stops. I'm like, no, sir, we shouldn't shoot the general. But then Rico ends up getting the general killed like a minute later because he's the one that shoots the bug that smushes him. And they laugh. Ace <laughs>, laughs about it. <laughs> what a bitch. What a loser. Yeah. I love the line, too. I used to think about this all the time. You want to live forever? Come on, you apes. I love You want to live forever. I think it's great. It's a great um, line. But the bug, like I used to play a lot with guns and stuff by myself and pretend. Starship Troopers and the mummy were the main two things oh, that I yeah. was doing in my head. Oh, yeah. Um, anything with hordes of enemies that I could shoot at. Oh, yeah. If, yeah. Are we going to play Helldivers 2 later after this? Uh, I wish. Jimmy, Jimmy plays it all the time. That game it, looks so dope. It's, it's obviously great. a Starship Troopers mm -hmm. ripoff, but in the best of ways, because even the characters in that game were like, we're going to spread democracy to this planet. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> Let's rain down some democracy, boys. <laughs> uh yeah, so the bug lands on the general. Ace laughs. Um, they end up contacting the Roger Young for a uh, escape out of there. Hope you have a crazy pilot. Yeah, they do. It's Carmen. Xander shows up. He's actually pretty cool, man. He does work. You know, what I mean, he gets out. He's shooting bugs. Shooting bugs. Getting, getting the infantry safe. safe in the in the in the plane. He's good at his job. Lieutenant loses his legs in a hole. You know what to do, uh, dude. This whole scene is honestly like kind of. I mean. Every scene in Star Trek, uh, Starship Troopers like this, but this scene in particular is so like jaw dropping in terms of like, how do they do this in 1997? Like the yeah. hordes of the bugs, like rushing the base. It looks so good. It does. It holds up, especially there was 4K on my TV oh and my shit. God. Dude, it looked fire. It's insane. Uh, Diz and kills the, the tanker. Sorry, I, a little bit further back before they start walking on this planet, they have the, uh, the fleet sort of bomb all the bugs and there's that really yeah. that shot where the explosions coming towards the camera and the bugs like, Oh no, it um, looks great. That actually was that shot held the record for the largest gasoline explosion ever filmed in a movie up until Spectre. Spectre, like the James the Bond James movie? Bond movie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's recently. Mm -hmm. and, like, and this shot's way better than the Spectre shot. Almost two decades. Yeah. And yeah. All they did was blow up bigger shit. And dude, that's, I, I can go on a rant about that shot. Cause they're like, it's the biggest explosion ever, but it's like the most unimpressive shot. Cause yeah, even just the way like, they film it. Yeah. The way they film it, it's like, there's no like panache to that. Like who cares? No whereas, sauce. whereas the sauce on this shot with the bugs, it's fucking great. Yeah. It's so good. And yeah. you see the bugs. They're getting, they're getting it. They're getting got. And the tanker comes out. Diz just drops a grenade right in his fucking gullet immediately, which is a great shot. And mm -hmm. she's like, yeah, oh, it's such a sad slow-mo thing. And she gets stabbed four times, I think, impaled four times with a little. Yeah. Don't die on me, Diz. <sighs> Tower guys get melted. Diz dies. I got to have you. Don't let me go, Johnny. Don't let me go. I, I'm letting you go. Never, he never told her he loved her. It's a one-time thing. Mm. Don't tell anybody I busted in less than 10. <laughs> <laughs> My secret dies with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Xander tells Carmen, Rico's back there. I think you should know. Your boy's back there. What? What? Because she thinks he's dead. Yeah, he doesn't. But he like goes up to the cockpit and he starts like yelling and, you know, you know, on whose authority? Like, I was made commander. Fleet does the flying. MI does, does the, the dying. dying. And then he still stands there awkwardly like, I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets. Yeah, the fleet is mobilized. We go to Dizzy's funeral. Uh, Officer Carl shows up. He's been promoted to, uh, or, and he promotes Rico to lieutenant of the Roughnecks who basically just copies everything that Radchek says yeah, for the rest of the movie. He's just a little rat, little tiny Radchek at this point. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a pipeline, baby. Think for yourself, son. <laughs> yeah. Be me. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and then they start prepping for the smart bug mission. The Roger Young gets blasted in half. The captain gets squished by the door. Um, and then Ace tells Johnny that the Roger Young went down. But he hears Carmen on the comms. And they go to save her. But then he's like, nah, she's probably dead. <laughs> the <laughs> situation then, um, is extremely hostile. Immediately in the next scene, he's like, she's she's fine. But that's explained later by saying that uh, Carl sent him a psychic message that she was alive and where to get her. Yeah. Um, so I do think I love this movie, but I do think this last little act is probably the weakest part of the movie because it just kind of feels a little it, rushed. And, and a it's little, the most normal movie movie stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, I, yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, yeah, Xander and Carmen end up crash landing in a hole. Um, they both get taken and stabbed, but kept alive for the brain bug. Mm -hmm. uh, and the new bugs from before are like the red carpet for the brain bug. What a gross design. I love it. And Xander is actually, like I said, Xander's actually cool. Like this whole movie has been like the other guy, but he gives her, gives the, her knife. the knife so she can protect herself. Yeah. And then uh, somebody like me is going to kill you. <laughs> Too when, when he gets brain sucked, bro, that's terrifying. Yeah. I hate it. That, that I hated bugs as a kid the too. Proboscis comes out of the brain bugs, like little vagina mouth. Yeah. That's a very vaginal mouth. Very vaginal design. Yeah. And then it just, it really, it's like all goopy and gross looking. Like he looks like a big Dune 2 popcorn bucket. <laughs> you know what I'm Extra saying? butter, you know? <laughs> and they make a real meal of like looking at that thing before it finally yeah, goes yeah, right into Xander's head. He spits on it and the bug's actually offended. Like, like you're literally you. covered in slime. More slime? That's my <laughs> slime. I don't want your slime on my slime. Yeah. Don't make slimes. Yep. Sucks his whole brains out. But then Rico comes in with a nuke. You know what this is? Yeah, you know. You're one of them smart bugs. Mm, smarter than me. I did 37 on my math test. And the bug's like... <laughs> I fucking 37. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Watkins gets sliced. And are you trying to be a hero? Just trying to kill bugs, sir. It's it's so good. <laughs> Come on. Everyone is, honestly, this might be a five-star movie. Dude, I, really, I, I gave it four and a half. I gave it four and a half too, but I really was like, do I give it the five? Letterbox <sighs> stars don't matter, but every now and then I get upset. Like, this is a five-star. Yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone is celebrating because they got the brain bug all of a sudden. And you're right. It's just kind of like, they got him. Yay. You know, you know who got him? Clancy Brown. Yeah. So him, good. Busted himself to private and then busted a nut and then got the brain bug. Yeah. Everything got busted. Thank Busting you, makes me feel good. Beanie, beanie. Bust makes me feel good. But then there's that scene where uh, Doogie Himmler walks up and puts his hand on the brain <laughs> bug and he's like, what's it thinking, sir? It's scared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I can love it. <laughs> yeah, Carl had told Rico how to find Carmen. Zim captured the brain. We get more propaganda. Carmen's a captain now. What mysteries will the brain bug reveal? And it's just like we can assume they just kill a bunch of bugs, but now Carmen's a captain and Rico is uh, a lieutenant. Wait, he's Radchek. Yeah, he's. <laughs> you want to live forever? Come on, you apes. You want to live forever? Yeah. Well, but earlier in that, what other line did he say? Oh, he tells uh, Carl. The, the rules. Yeah. Well, he, and he tells Carl. Uh, do you want to be the lieutenant? Yeah. Until uh, I die or you find somebody better. And yeah, Carl's like, what just, a good line. He, he doesn't even give credit to Ratchak. No, he, like, <laughs> he's just copying Ratchak for the rest of the movie. I get it, though. Like, those are dope lines. Yeah, they are. Anyway, thank you, Adam, for choosing this movie. I hope you enjoy <sighs> it as much as we do. Love it. Honestly, probably my 20th watch, but my first in a few years. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a minute it's, since I've seen it. It's been quite a minute, so I really enjoyed this. I hope mm -hmm. you guys did as well. What a good fucking movie. But we're out of time. That's all we've got right now. We've got to go return some videotapes. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this was Streaming Things. You apes want to live forever? Happy streaming. Happy streaming.